Hello and welcome back. In this Black Excellence series, we will highlight Junior Bridgman, the wealthy NBA retiree that no one knows of. Whenever there is mention of the wealthiest NBA athletes, the names of Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, and Shaquille O'Neal occupy a place among the game's all-time greats who have reached never broke again status. But rarely do you hear the name Junior Bridgman, the third richest man to play in an NBA jersey. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to Black Excellence. This is where we celebrate Black excellence, achievement, and affluence. Our mission is to inspire you as we enlighten you. Ulysses Lee Jr. Bridgman was born in East Chicago, Indiana on September 17, 1953. His success at Washington High School, where the basketball team went undefeated and won the Indiana State Championship in his junior year, helped him earn a scholarship to the University of Louisville. The focal point of the Cardinals' offensive attack in three varsity seasons, the 6'5 guard averaged over 15 points, 7.6 rebounds, and 2.7 assists. Bridgman won the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year twice and led the team to the 1975 Final Four. After entering into the NBA draft in 1975, Bridgman was the eighth overall pick by the Los Angeles Lakers, but he was immediately traded to the Milwaukee Bucks in a huge package deal that sent center Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to LA. Bridgman joined the Milwaukee Bucks, where he played the majority of his 12-year career. He built a decent career, playing six-man, but in that time, he scored almost 12,000 points and averaged double figures for nine consecutive seasons. The Bucks were so appreciative of Bridgman's average of 13.6 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 2.4 assists per game that they retired his number two jersey in 1988. When Bridgman retired from the NBA, he was far from a multimillionaire. Forty years ago, NBA players were not blessed with the million-dollar multi-year contracts that they enjoy today. Most of the superstars in the 70s and 80s actually made the bulk of their money through endorsements and television commercials. In fact, Bridgman's peak salary during his tenure in the NBA was only $350,000. This was 1985. Make no mistake, it was enough money for a good life in the 80s, but you certainly needed a plan B to live the rest of your life comfortably. Bridgman was the president of the National Basketball Players Association and was part of the NBA's collective bargaining agreement in the 1980s. As he sat across the table from them, he noticed in between negotiations how happy they were and noticed that they were excited about all of their investments that extended beyond basketball. These owners and entrepreneurs got their self-fulfillment out of making and creating something successful. This was a eureka moment for Bridgman, and he started to accelerate his penetration into the business world. During the off-seasons, Bridgman had a one-track mind. He was determined to learn the franchise business, even so much that he started working at a local Wendy's restaurant while as an active player. Some fans were astounded and somewhat concerned that an active player had just served them a fast food meal, but Bridgman was on a mission. By the end of his NBA career, he had already opened up three Wendy's restaurants and had his eyes on even more. As owner and CEO of Bridgman Foods Incorporated, Junior steadily acquired restaurants and built his restaurant empire. At its peak, Bridgman operated over 450 restaurants including 263 Wendy's restaurants and 123 Chili's restaurants. He was Wendy's largest franchise owner in the country, and the former professional basketball player also took on a few Fazoli's and Blade's Pizza restaurant franchises as well. Bridgman Foods employed over 11,000 people in 20 states and brought in over $530 million in annual revenue. His companies received several prestigious awards during his tenure, including recognition for exemplary performances and operational excellence by a franchise. He sold his holdings in the fast food business in 2016 and focused his energy and investment into becoming a bottler for the Coca-Cola company. 
He serves as the president and CEO of Heartland Coca-Cola and runs its production plant with his son, Justin. Heartland Coca-Cola operates 18 distribution centers across Kansas, Missouri, and Southern Illinois. In 2018, he closed on an acquisition of Coca-Cola Refreshments Canada to become the exclusive Coca-Cola distributor in Canada. Let's pause and repeat. Junior Bridgman and his son are responsible for virtually every Coca-Cola drink sold in the entire country of Canada. Now that's black excellence. Their Canadian bottling and distribution operation has almost 6,000 employees spread across more than 50 sales and distribution centers and five production facilities. Some of the brands it bottles include Coca-Cola, Sprite, Fanta, Nestea, and Powerade. And if we are still not impressed, the successful entrepreneur Ulysses Jr. Bridgman rescued Ebony Magazine and its sister publication Jet from bankruptcy in 2016. Founded in 1945 by Black businessman John H. Johnson, Ebony Magazine was one of the few glossies to address African American issues, personalities, and interests in a positive manner. The magazine and its sister, Jet, enjoyed decades of popularity before declining advertising revenues and the internet caused it to fall on hard times. Bridgman hopes he can make a difference with the historical and iconic publications. He and his children will run the magazines and are putting plans together to relaunch it as a mostly digital outlet with specialty print issues. Today, his net worth is estimated to be around $600 million. Justin Bridgman serves on the PGA Board of Directors, the Nysmith Basketball Hall of Fame Board of Governors, and the Churchill Downs Inc. Board of Directors. Mr. Bridgman accomplished the amazing task of turning his $350,000 annual salary into $600 million with hard work and tenacity. With so many cautionary tales of millionaire athletes going broke three years after retirement, it's inspiring to see a shining example of an NBA player who's shattering the stereotype. Uh, so we, you went into the league thinking about what you're going to do because you're going to have to do something to make money when you're out of the league. And no one knows how long you're going to play. So it's always, for us at that time, it was always in the back of our mind, what am I going to do when I stop playing or can't play this game anymore? So I did certain things in the summertime. My first four summers uh, in, in the NBA, I, I took classes at the law school at the University of Wisconsin and uh, uh, enjoyed that, but it was going to take about 20 years that way to get a law degree. And so I went from that to working for various companies in the summertime, uh, trying to just figure out what is it you want to do when, when you stop playing. Uh, I never thought that basketball would be that thing that I continued after my playing days. I, I just never had that desire to be a coach. Maybe it might have been interesting to be on the management side. Uh, so for me, it was almost the first day I became uh, an NBA player. You start thinking about what are you going to do when this is over. We appreciate the fact that you stayed with us until the end. Thank you for spending time with us and don't forget to like this video. Also, make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a video. Bye for now. We will see you tomorrow. Yeah.